28. At 25 degrees Celsius, how high will the water rise in a glass capillary tube with an inner diameter of 0.63 millimeters? And then refer to example 10.4 for the required information. We don't have to refer to that example, right? We got all the information right here, which I listed down at the bottom here. Now we did talk about, uh, we're talking about water. So I'm giving all the information that we need to know for water. So in order to figure out why I pulled this up, remember every time that we're talking about capillary tubes, there's only one formula that you have to know. And that's this formula right here. So it's a pretty straightforward formula, multiplication and division. So let's just figure out what's going on here. Now H stands for the height. So it's going to be how high does that water rise in the, the capillary tube? And that's the question that they're asking for. How high will the water rise? Well, we're solving for an H. Okay, so this is what we don't know, which means that we should know everything else here. Now, H is equal to two. That's a standard number for this formula. Two times T, and capital T is not temperature. So that's why they threw in 25 degrees Celsius here. They wanted to try to trick you. But T in this capillary action uh, formula, we'll call it, T is surface tension. And that is the T for water that I put down below here. And I converted it for you in the correct units. So in this formula, we have to use kilograms, seconds, and uh, meters. So for T, uh, surface tension is 0 0.07199. So I guess I'll just put that over here. So this is 0 0.07199, the units, if we wanted to just know the units, kilogram per second squared. Okay. Now, cosine of an angle. This comes from what material is being used. And they specifically said that we are in a glass capillary tube. Just know that when you're in a glass capillary tube, when you insert the glass capillary tube in the water, there is no angle uh, that's being reflected, it just goes basically straight down. So for a glass capillary tube, your angle is always going to be zero. So that's the key there. So in this case, I have zero degrees. R stands for radius. So this is the radius of the capillary tube. And they did say that the glass capillary tube had an inner diameter of 0.63 millimeters. Uh-oh, I got to get the radius. But we know that if I take a diameter and I divide it by two, I get a radius. So radius equals diameter divided by two. This comes from math, right, guys? So my radius equals, let's see, my diameter, they said 0 0.63 millimeters. I'm going to divide that by 2. And my radius for right now is 0 0.63, oh boy, 0 0.63 divided by 2, which is 0 0.315. And since the diameter was in millimeters, this is going to be in millimeters for now. This little P symbol, the rho, that is actually the density of your substance. So you can know this by RDG, but um, I know some textbooks put this as uh, the formula because this is kind of like physics-based. In physics, you'll use this uh, little variable for density. But I wrote over here that the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. In chemistry, we normally know it as grams per mil. However, this formula has all of the standard physics uh, variables. So that's kilograms and meters. Isn't physics fun? But if you guys are looking for physics, we have a whole textbook that my brother did on this channel. So go check it out. I heard it's pretty good. <laughs> Love my brother. Let's keep going. So we have this in the proper units, 1,000. And if we want the units kilogram per meter cubed, 
And G is the universal gravity constant, right? It's the acceleration due to gravity, another physics constant, 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. But now the only thing that I really no see here is that, remember, your units have to match. So if we're using kilograms for the density, I have to use kilograms for the surface tension. So that checks out. If I'm using seconds for the surface tension, seconds for acceleration due to gravity. Meters for acceleration due to gravity, but uh-oh, millimeters. Now I just have to convert to meters. But we know that, right? Millimeters to meters, we just divide by 1,000. So take this value, divide by 1,000, and you get 3.5, 3.15, 3.15, Three point one five times ten to the negative fourth, and that is going to be now going on in here. Okay, and if we have meter and meter, what's going to be the height in? Yeah, when this comes out, this is going to be in meter as well. So let's trial it out. Height equals. Got a lot of stuff going on here. Two times something, cosine of something, and then we got the three values down here. Beautiful. All right, so let's go. Two times surface tension, 0 0.07199 times the cosine of zero degrees, because that was glass. The radius we found out was the 3.15 times 10 to the negative fourth. Density of water in those correct units are 1,000, and then uh, 9.81. Okay, now since this is all multiplication and division, we could throw this all into the calculator. I love the TI-84, because uh, I can do that. So maybe that's what I'll do. If you need to work this out separately, get one number for the top, one number for the bottom, and then just divide them. But I'll show you, work alongside, uh, to show you how to plug it in all in one shot. We'll do it, we'll, two, we'll do two separate, uh, um, I guess we'll do it one shot, right? Let's see. Now, before you start, just make sure that you are in uh, degree mode, because we're talking about degrees here. So I'm just going to go over to my mode, and oh boy, you see how it says radian, right? I need to switch that over to degree. Now, probably it's not going to change for this answer right here, but just to make sure. I mean, we all have horror stories of doing, you know, uh, a degree, you know, a chapter in, a, not chapter, but a test in like, you know, calculus or something where you have it in radian mode and they're supposed to be in degree mode and yeah, fun times. But anyway, it's in degree, so I'm just going to quit it. And now let's go two times point zero seven one nine nine times the cosine of zero. Now, if you want, you could enter this in just to kind of get one number. Okay. Now I'm just going to divide all these out. So I'm just going to keep pressing divide because I don't like to use parentheses. So divided by 3.15 second EE. That's always what I use for, um, scientific notation because then the calculator understands to group that whole thing together. Then I'm going to divide again, because I'm not using parentheses. I want to keep this number in the denominator. So I'm going to divide by 1,000. Then I got to divide that 9.81. And there you go. Whoop, whoop. So now it seems like two sig figs because of the diameter. So I'm going to give out two sig figs. So 0, 0.0. .0 four, seven, and this is in meters. So if you want to switch it to millimeters, all you got to do is just times by a thousand. So just take this number times by 1000 or just move the decimal over, you know, uh, three times to the right and you get 47, 47 millimeters. And that is your final answer. What do you think? Okie dokie. 
Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning into the video. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, I hope you're having a great day out there. And at this moment in time, we're, you know, in a holiday season and the New Year's coming. So I hope you guys have a great uh, New Year. Happy holidays. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.